Hello and welcome to Trinity High School's BBC News Report on the, tw- the 16th of March 2017. Hi, I'm Abby and I'm going to be talking about restrictions on social media. We surveyed 34 people in our school and community. The survey came up with some interesting results. The results showed that 22 people out of 34 have lied about their age on social media and 12 people said that it had influenced their life negatively. Most of the people we surveyed thought people today spend too much time on social media. This concludes that everyone should stick to the age restrictions on social media so that everyone can enjoy social media to its full extent. Hello, my name is Anna and I'm going to discuss a problem that 5.43 million children in the UK have experienced. This is one of the reasons there is social media age restrictions. Cyberbullying is a massive problem in this day and age and we think that it is important that everybody know the negative impact it has on people. Over the last three years, there has been an 83% increase of counselling sessions over the phone about online bullying. Seven in ten young people aged between 13 and 22 have been a victim of cyberbullying. Because of this, over 16,000 children are missing school every day. 30% of young people have reverted to self-harming and 10% of young children have attempted to commit suicide as a result of bullying. Bullying doesn't just affect people when they're young. People who have been bullied are at greatest risk for health problems in adulthood, over six times more likely to be diagnosed with a serious illness, smoke regularly or develop a mental health problem compared to those not involved in bullying. Bullying used to stop in the playground skates, but nowadays people can hide behind a computer screen and an anonymous name, which is much harder to deal with. If you feel you're a victim of bullying, don't keep it to yourself. Tell a responsible person you can trust, like a family member, a friend or even a teacher at school. If you don't feel comfortable with discussing this with somebody you know personally, Childline has a telephone centre that is open 24-7, as well as an email and a website you can visit to talk to people that have went through the same thing as you. Thanks for listening. Hi, my name is Nicole. My name is Grace. And my name is Dana. And we are going to review this week's politics. This week, the Conservative Party was fined £70,000 by the Electoral Commission for breaking election expense rules. There was missing payments of £104,000 and £118,000 that was not reported. Investigation have shown that Conservatives may have broken election law at the 2015 general election. In response to the Electoral Commission report, a Conservative spokesman said it had complied fully and will pay the fines. Once again, President Trump's travel ban has been brought by a US judge in the state of Hawaii. District Judge Derek Watson cited questionable evidence in Trump's argument that the ban was a matter of national security. Watson added that it would cause irreparable injury by violating First Amendment protections against religious discrimination. President Trump thinks that the judiciary branch of government has become too powerful as he was quoted saying the ruling was unprecedented judicial overreach. The travel ban would have put a 90-day ban on people from six nations including Iran, Syria and Somalia. This would also include a 120-day ban on refugees. This decision, in many people's opinions, goes against people's basic human rights. SNP have been up in arms because they they feel that Scotland's voice isn't being heard through the Brexit negotiations because the majority of Scotland voted to remain in the EU, however, are being removed from the single market. This leaves SNP asking the Prime Minister for a second referendum. Theresa May has replied saying that the SNP are playing games with politics and that Scotland is better as part of the UK. I'm sure we'll have an update on this very soon. And now for our sport commissioners. Hi, my name is Oasis. This is Michael and these are today's sports stories. Firstly, reigning Premier League champions Leicester City have defeated Sevilla 3-2 in aggregate to reach the quarter-finals of the Champions League. Despite a 2-1 first leg defeat in Spain, the Foxes overturned the result, courtesy of goals from Captain Wes Morgan and Mark Albrighton on Tuesday night. 
Bizarrely, Leicester won the game still under the management of caretaker Craig Shakespeare following Cloud- Claudio Ranieri's sacking last month. Shakespeare had won all of his three games in charge of the club and will continue the role until the end of the season. All this really does make you wonder if Leicester could repeat yet another fairy tale story by winning the Champions League this season. Also, Monaco and Atletico Madrid last night joined Real Madrid, Barcelona, Juve, Bayern Munich, Borussia Dortmund and Leicester in the last day of the competition. Manchester United are also in European action this week. Tonight they will face FC Rostov in their second leg fixture in the last 16 of the Europa League. The result was a one-each draw in Russia and tonight Manchester United will be hoping to continue their undefeated record at home in this year's competition. Unfortunately, key players Wayne Rooney and Anthony Martial have been ruled out of the game due to injury. In other news, Roger Federer has pulled himself through another victory against Rafael Nadal. Federer, 35, beat Nadal for the 13th time out of this long rivalry. Federer could well be on to another victory to follow up his Australian Open final victory. Federer has set himself up for a quarter-final showdown against Nick Kyrgios. In another story, Novak Djokovic, the world number two, has lost in a shocking defeat against 21-year-old Nick Kyrgios. The serve of Nick Kyrgios is what gave him the victory, scoring 24 aces in the match. The Australian will now face Roger Federer in the quarter-final. And now back to Michael. And finally, British runner Laura Muir had extraordinary success at the European Indoor Athletics Championships in Belgrade. She thought she broke a 32-year championship record in under a fifth of a second by under a fifth of a second to win the 1500-metre race, recording a time of four minutes and two seconds. Then, just 24 hours later, Glasgow-born Muir gained yet another gold in the 3000-metre race, winning by a significant margin and once again establishing a new championship record. This time, her time was 8 minutes and 35 seconds. Fellow British teammate Eilish McCulligan won bronze in the 3000 metres and finishing with a time of 8 minutes 47. And there has been some breaking news recently that Middlesbrough manager Atar Karanka has been sacked from the club after three and a half years as manager. Thank you for listening to today's Sports Stories. Thanks for watching Trinity High School BBC School Report 2017.